Hello YouTube, Captain Mac here and welcome to the Season 2 Finale in the life of a virtual airline pilot. And boy, has it been a long road. We've been really waiting for this one, haven't we? As you can see, only two hours to go and I put out three different options for you guys to vote on. I thought, hey, what the heck? Let's do something just a little bit different. It's going to be a special flight for us anyway because we've been waiting for this for a while now. <clears throat> so, um... The three options included two of them with a E-175 and then one with a default CRJ. And I was really surprised to find that overwhelmingly you guys voted for the CRJ. And it's really a shame that Aerosoft just, you know, they haven't put out that uh, CRJ yet. And, I, boy, I was hoping they'd have it done before we, before we got done with this season. But they didn't, so... Uh, at some point they'll release it. The good news is, is once we get promoted to captain, we can fly anything from the uh, probationary first officer and fir f first officer ranks, which means whenever that CRJ does finally drop, we can always go back and do some flights in it. So I'm looking forward to the opportunity to do that. But in the meantime, we got two hours to go, and we are going to soak up every last second of those two hours, and then we're going to actually make sure we go a couple minutes over just to be absolutely sure that we get that promotion to captain. So let's take a quick look at the flight because we want to get started. And uh, you can see I've already gone ahead and grabbed the bit over here. Uh, again, based on your guys' votes, it's an Alaska Airlines flight uh but it is flown by SkyWest, if I'm not mistaken. And I think we're going to be flying it in a SkyWest livery because, hey, why the heck not, right? So uh, Boise down to San Diego. I do have the scenery for San Diego. Um, I think we've been in there before, so good times there. The flight is scheduled for two hours and six minutes. It's probably going to take us just a little bit longer because, again, we're going to make sure that... Uh, that we don't get there early. Total is 652 nautical miles and as always weather is going to be from Active Sky 2016. Charts, routes, all of that information is going to come from PFPX and Navigraph charts. So with all that said and without further ado, let's hop on over to the sim, let's get our A cars fired up and let's get this thing rolling as quickly as we can because I gotta tell you I'm excited. All right, what do you say we get this sucker started, huh? Ready to finish this last flight, I'll tell you what. Okay, we've only got one bid in there, so we can go ahead and click on the Get Bid button. And there we have it. It is a SkyWest Airlines flight. And just so you know, uh, well, I'll talk about it in a second. But uh, anyway, so there she is, uh, Boise to San Diego. And two hours, six minutes. And we're going to use up every minute of it, like I said, because uh, we're going to make sure that we go over the necessary hours for promotion. So let's go ahead and grab previous route here. doesn't really matter which one. There are none in there, so we'll grab none. I don't really care. <laughs> uh, let's see if that works. Uh, what are we going up to? It's got us scheduled for 41,000. We are not going up to 41,000 feet. It's just not going to happen. We'll go up to 37,000 though. How's that sound? Let's see if we can get her up there. There's a problem with the route. You may continue. So because there's no actual route in there, it said there was a problem with it, and then it says you can continue. Because you don't, listen, you have to have something in there to get A cars up and running, but you don't have to have a route in there. All right, so that's it. Start flight. CRJ, <laughs> this is one of those silly things. It just has to do, they've got it scheduled as a CRJ-7. We're flying a CRJ-700. Same thing. <gasps> Hiccup there. We're good to go. We're good on that. And... Uh, I don't know why it's dinging at me. It likes to do that. Okay, there we go. We got that started. Uh, okay, so as you can see, we're flying the United Express uh, SkyWest Airlines. And the reason I did that is the only Alaska Airlines that I could fly was for that Wilco CRJ Next Gen that we all love and despise so much, right? So I just decided instead of flying a default livery or a white paint scheme or something, but at least we'd have something to look at. So we went with the United uh, livery on this one. I looked at a few others and I thought, well, it needs to at least be U.S. since we're flying in the U.S. and all that good stuff. So there you have it. That's why we're flying in the United Express. Uh, here we are at the terminal ready to rock and roll. You can see we got some nice weather in there, so that's going to be fantastic. Now, right before we jump in here, I just want to say really quick... Uh, 
I do not have a checklist for this thing anymore. I looked for it. I couldn't find it. So we are going to be doing this without a checklist. <laughs> and it's been a while since I've flown it. Um, we'll kind of somewhat sort of do checklists, you know, because we got to make sure we've got everything set. But I don't have a checklist in front of me, so we're going to be kind of winging it, which is going to be interesting. So, yeah. Uh, the flip side of that is you fly, air, you know, you fly these things enough times. I, I was going to say you fly airplanes, but, I mean... Yeah, we're flying airplanes, but we're flying them in a simulator, so I don't want to sound like I'm this master pilot or anything. But you fly enough of these aircraft in this simulator, and you start to learn you know, the systems enough that uh, you can pretty much do what you need to do. So let's see if we can figure it out as we hop in here. And I always kind of love the nose-down view of this thing. And let's start by, why is that even on? There's no power on the aircraft. <laughs> so let's start by turning the battery master on and fire up the APU right away and as that's doing that because I forgot to do it let me uh, grab the oh geez I got all kinds of stuff open here don't I no I don't want to save that isn't this fun last flight and we're having all kinds of problems already 8,004 pounds of fuel we know this thing is horrendous with fuel it is absolutely horrendous so we are definitely taking more than 8,000 pounds of fuel so let's go in here and go to uh, fuel and payload. If I can get my brain to function, change the fuel. So it's got us at 19,000. Um, here's what we're going to do. Let's just uh, zero that out. Bam. And that puts us at 14,000, and that's going to be enough fuel. I know that's a terrible way to do it, but that's what we do. Why did that thing bounce just now? Oh, the airplane moved. That's why. Dirt. Okay. Uh, let's see here. So APU should be firing up. APU should be up and running at this point, so we're good on that. Now, there is no actual FMC in this thing, not in the default version. So we're not going to be using that. Good times. Uh, let's see what else. It doesn't really get any more basic than the default aircraft, does it? I mean, they're great to have when you first start flying this thing. It's like, oh, yeah, this is great. And then once you start to get used to things, you realize that this thing really, really sucks. So... Anyway, it is what it is. Let's go ahead and let's get a couple more things set up here. We're going to need to set up our speed initially. We're going to put it for 240. There we go, 240. And then our altitude, we're going up to flight level 370, which we shouldn't have any problem getting there, to be honest with you. It's a default aircraft, so the flight model is not exactly accurate. Come on. And there we go, 370, make sure the flight directors are on. And what else? Where's the nav GPS switch in this thing? You guys remember that? The nav GPS switch? You know what I'm talking about. It's, uh, oh man, I'm going to have to find it before we take off here, aren't I? Because we're probably on nav right now. Nav mode, which is, I thought it was one of these down here. No. Nav source. Okay, yeah, GPS. That's what we want right there. GPS. Hey, I actually remember that. Okay. So <laughs> there's not a lot to do to set up this aircraft, as you well know. We do want to make sure that our flaps are set to zero, which they are, that our throttles are set to zero, and they are. We want to make sure that our uh, speed brakes are all the way forward or down, and they are. And I think that's about it. There's no, I mean, we could we could pull that thing for the fire, I guess, but that would be silly. Uh, we've got the AP running. We're good on that. And we can't do anything with any of this. Nope, none of the, oh, wait, anti-ice. We can turn anti-ice on. We don't need it, though. Uh, probe heat should probably be on. That was interesting. That turned everything on, so pointless there. And uh, let's see, beacon needs to be on, which it is, strobe is off, logo lights can go on, and wing lights, nope, nav lights, nav lights can go on. Uh, hydraulics are in the on position, we'll leave them in the on position, that's fine. And what else, fuel, I think the fuel pumps are all on. Nope, it's on now though. Oh, we don't we don't need cross feeds. Okay, so now the fuel pumps are on. <laughs> Good times. Generators are off as they should be at the moment. 
And that's pretty much it, which means, yeah, we're pretty much ready for push back and start, or push and start. Let's go ahead and get rid of the jetway there and close the door. Let's turn that uh, menu bar off up there. And pull up the GSX. Oi, there's a lot of choices there, huh? Uh, Sky West makes sense. And we want the nose to go to the right and the tail to go to the left. And we do not want to start engines before push back. There he goes, driving right through the jetway there. Good times. I don't think you can uh, change this to... Well, maybe you can. No, that's just the range. Hello, Captain. Can we change it to... Uh, to view the map? Out there format and mode that's just range it won't oh there we go okay nav source what's this altimeter is already set decision height knob what are these bearing pointer departure check completed Why has been inserted so I have to admit I was really surprised that you guys wanted to fly this one. I think everybody's kind of in the same boat though. We just want to kind of get this done and over with, you know, get this last flight in. So uh, let's go ahead and take care of our engine start here. See if we can uh, do this without too much difficulty. So we want the continuous ignition to be on. We're going to start with the right engine, so we'll just click on the start button here. And as we hop down here, you can see she's spooling up already. So we'll keep an eye on her end too when it gets past uh, 25. I'm just guessing on that number, but that's what it is for a 737. So then we'll go ahead and introduce the fuel down here, which... Uh, why are those different? Oh, it introduced the fuel automatically? It looks like it did. Yeah, it did the fuel on its own right here. See that? Interesting! I didn't know it did that. None of this stuff works, of course. Okay, let's go ahead and take care of the left engine. Start. And, as you see, it went ahead and did the fuel for us, so... Easy days. Uh, where's the parking brake at in here? It's not this one. There it is. There we go. Park and brake on. Yeah. Okay. Guess he didn't want to say anything. So there's engine uh, one just about done spooling up. Boy, it's wicked simple in this thing, isn't it? <laughs> I guess there's something to be said for simplicity. Oh, good times, good times. Alright, uh, what else we need to do here? Go back up top. Alright, let's turn the APU off. I clicked it, it did nothing. There we go, now it's off. Uh, let's turn, oh, generators came, nope, they're still off. So, all the generators on, that should get rid of our warnings there, it did, fantastic. They really talk a lot on that thing, don't they? Let's go ahead and uh, taxi lights on. Good to go there. What's this? Nothing. Nothing. Oh, well, we probably should have turned those on already, huh? Emergency lights. You can't do anything with those anyway. And that is probably the fastest push uh, from, from startup to push and start the engines that we've ever had on this channel. <laughs> Maybe not, but... It was really fast. Okay, so I'm going to take a quick look, make sure I didn't miss anything since I'm not using a checklist here. I'll be back shortly, and we'll start our taxi. All right, so I suppose the downside here is that, you know, I wanted, I wanted to make sure that this last flight as a first officer was a special flight because, boy, it's been a long haul, hasn't it? But um, doing it in a, C in a default CRJ is kind of like, eh, eh, so-so. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that, guys. But, you know, at the same time, you guys voted for it, right? So, sort of your fault. <laughs> All right, we got the track IR on. Everything's ready to rock and roll. So let's go ahead and uh, let's make sure that parking brake is off. 
It looks like it is. Let's start pulling this bad boy forward. And as we roll out here, what do you say we go ahead and take care of the taxi and departure briefings? Alright, we're set up over here at gate B21, as you can see down here in the little inset. Now, this is the terminal here, and then it's representing this guy up here. So, B21 is right off the corner here. Uh, our wind today is 2695 knots, so we're going to be taking runway 28 right, which is more than enough runway for us. So, we'll push it back nose to the right down here to probably just come down here to Delta and cross over to the taxiway Alpha here, and then up to 28 right and hold short there. As for our departure, it's about as simple as it gets. Boise 3 departure, runway 28 right is going to be this guy over here. So basically it's just runway heading 278 degrees until uh, otherwise instructed by ATC, uh, which would most likely just be a you know continue on course or something to that effect. So pretty straightforward. Uh, we don't have to worry about the mountains or anything like that over here because we're taking off in the other direction. And once we uh, once we get airborne, I don't know, we, we won't hang around too long before we get started on route. But uh, it's about like I said, it's about as simple as it gets. So uh, big sky departure on 126.9 and 119.6. Uh, it uh, looks like that's based on the heading you're taking. So from 279 to 097 degrees which is us we're, well no actually we're the other one because we're at 278 <laughs> degrees which is kind of funny the way they do that 119.6 for us so there's your departure briefing and your taxi brief let's go ahead and get rolled all right here we are holding short of the runway let's make sure we got everything set for takeoff we've got our flap set to eight uh, spoilers need to be armed that's not armed that's not armed. I guess they won't arm. <laughs> Let's try that one. Nope. That changes. Uh, what do you call it? <laughs> uh, changes windows. Uh, my brain is suddenly not functioning. It's driving me nuts actually right now. Uh, let's see. I, I really thought there was a way to change this display so that you could see um, the map display. But it's just, it's not letting me do that. I don't, I don't know if there's a way to do it, and I just forgot. Maybe it's in the 2D view. I don't know. But anyway, we're kind of stuck with it. Okay, let's make sure landing lights are on. There they are. Uh, strobe lights can come on. They are there. Continuous ignition needs to be on, which it is. And I think that is it. I think everything's ready to rock and roll. Boy, this is going really quick in this airplane, isn't it? <laughs> let's go ahead and get the track IR on. And let's start nosing this bit. Oh, hiccups. Nosing this thing out there. Well, I tell you what, you know, I was so excited about getting this flight done, and now I just kind of feel like a soup sandwich. It's a little ridiculous. All right. Let's see if we can get this thing going. All that little extra movement has something to do with the Easy Dot camera. It's not the actual airplane moving. It's my supposed to be my head moving, but you know how that is. Lots of runway to work with. Nobody there. Nobody there. Good. I actually like the look of the cloudy weather right now. It's going to make for a nice departure. Looking forward to that. Alright, let's swing it around here. And what do you say we just go right into a rolling takeoff? I say we do that. Let's do that. There we are. Just about dead center. Not too bad. Now remember when we get up to cruise altitude, we're going to have to do the speed. Everything's got to be done manually, so we're going to have to watch the speed here. Come on. There we go. Throttle it up. I don't like that little extra head movement. I, that's a setting I can change, though. Alright, there's 80 knots. We do not have V speeds, but I'm guessing that rotate is going to be at about 145, so that would put us at V1. And rotate. Look at that. Whoa! See that little extra head movement is ridiculous. Okay, positive rate of climb. Let's go ahead and get the gear up. Watch that speed. We'll back those throttles off a little. Oh yeah, I'm definitely going to change that movement. I don't like that. I'm going to get seasick in this thing. Okay, let's take out one setting of flaps. Into the clouds we go. 
flight director is doing very little for us because it wants us to go nose down, which is retarded. I mean, nose down a little, but... Oh, all that extra bumping around is ridiculous, isn't it? I know which setting that is, too. You know what? Just, just so that you guys can see, let me show you what that is real quick. When you pull up your studio, it's this thing here. See? Just like that, it's gone. That's ridiculous. Okay, looking pretty good here. Uh, let's go ahead and set uh, the speed setting. Speed is now set. Let's set our nav mode. And let's turn on the autopilot. And keep an eye on it here as we come up out of the clouds. Looking good. We can go ahead and take out that last flap setting there. See, I don't like that. It's descending right now to gain speed. Why would it do that? That's terrible. Oh, because I didn't hit altitude hold, huh? I'll bet you. Where's that at? Altitude. There we go. Oops. <laughs> I'm so used to LNAV, VNAV, all that stuff. But it really is nice to have, uh, to have a proper aircraft, isn't it? Lots of clouds out here, really enjoying that. I love flying in the clouds, good time. So this is gonna swing us all the way around now. Let me turn off track IR here. Let's go ahead and take care of a, well, we'll wait till we get above 10,000. Let's pull up this GPS. I'm gonna move it off to the side over here. Uh, it's not showing a flight plan at all. Oh, this is just stellar. Where's my flight plan? Did it not load it? I didn't load it, did I? That's pretty cool. <laughs> Let's load the flight plan, guys. Oh, my word. Uh, okay, now there's, there's a flight plan in there. There you go. Now it's going to swing us around. I, can you believe that? I forgot to load the flight plan. I mean, seriously. You know what? This is... I, I despise default aircraft now. I will, I will hate them for the rest of my life. Let me undock this and move it over here so I have access to it. For the rest of my life now, I'm going to despise default aircraft because I can't get my crap together. How did I forget to load the flight plan in there? That's absolutely ludicrous. Oh, forgive me, folks. I suppose if we're... <laughs> it's the season finale. We might as well go out on a... On a well, I guess that's a low note, not really a high note. <laughs> Not, not the best performance there, huh? But it is what it is. Um, she's going to swing us all the way around. My goodness. Uh, we're coming up here. What are we at? 9,300 feet. Once we get above, we'll increase our speed a little bit. Turn off our landing lights. We can take taxi lights off now. We'll go through a, an after takeoff checklist, sort of, somewhat, kind of. Man. Forgot to load the flight plan. See, this is, this is, it's just, a sh it's, I don't even know what to say. I'm speechless, if you can imagine that. Okay, here we are passing 10,000 feet. Turn the landing lights off at this point. We can increase our speed. Let's just go ahead and, uh, you got to watch how fast you increase it. Or this thing will actually descend on you. Maybe. Well, it looks like it's doing all right. Let's take it up to 300 knots for now. Uh, 290. Let's do 290. And what else? Okay, so after landing checklist, landing lights are off. Flaps are up. Gear is up. And we are good to go. We've loaded a flight plan now, so something to be said for that. It's going to actually get us where we're trying to go. And I think that's uh, pretty much it. Yeah, there's your after takeoff checklist in the default CRJ. Good times, people. Okay, so that means, as always, this is never going to change. It's time for some of that obligatory elevator music.
Alright, it's going to be the uh, Hubbard 1 arrival for us today, and I've already gone ahead and <clears throat> picked out, uh, I went into the flight plan before I got everything started, and I picked out the actual uh, waypoints here. That being said, I couldn't find Hubbard, uh, and I couldn't find Tori. It doesn't mean they aren't there, it just can be a little difficult to find those waypoints in that default flight planner and I've shown you all how to do that before but anyway let's go ahead and take a look at what we're doing here we're gonna come in at LAX up here and then bang a left to 118 degrees and we will uh, fly over Otis and then we'll be bypassing Hubbard for Cardi and at Cardi we need to be at or below 15,000 feet so we're gonna try and make sure we do that properly then we'll bang a right down here we'll bypass Tori and go straight to MZB and then from there, because we're going to be taking runway 27, we'll bang a left. And I've got it set to go direct to Rebu, uh, which is one of the waypoints on the approach. And you'll see that here in a little bit. But uh, we'll probably uh, take control with the heading mode there and just fly parallel to the runway until we get about even with Rebu. And then we'll swing it around to the right for our approach. So pretty straightforward. Uh, ATIS on 134.80 and SoCal Approach on 119.6. There's your arrival. Alright, we're going to be coming up on our top of descent here pretty quickly, but I wanted to take a minute. Uh, I've shown this before, but for those of you who either haven't seen it or forgot or whatever, calculating top of descent is kind of a pain in the butt. Now, there are some very precise ways to do it, but we're going to use a simple formula, which I'm going to pop up here on the screen. And uh, what we're going to do is we're going to follow this formula here, which is it's generalized. Now, keep that in mind. It's generalized. This does not give you a very precise uh, end of descent point or anything like that. But basically, what we want to do to give us a general idea of our rate of descent uh, and where we start that at, our top of descent and our rate of descent, is we want to multiply the number of thousands of feet that we have to lose by three. Okay, and then we want to take our ground speed divided by 2 and multiply by 10 to give our, us our rate of descent. So as you can see in the example here, we're at 37,000 feet. We want to get down to 4,000 feet. That's a difference of 33,000 feet. Get rid of the zeros. Multiply 33 times 3, and that's 99, and that gives us our top of descent point, 99 nautical miles out. For our rate of descent, we need to know what our ground speed is going to be. We're going to target our ground speed to be around 350. Now, it's going to be a little higher at first, but the difference is going to be made up when we slow down uh, near, you know, once we go below 10,000 feet and so on. So we're going to take 350 knots as our target ground speed. We're going to divide that by 2 and then multiply by 10, and that gives us 1,750. So 1,750 feet per minute is our desired rate of descent when we start our descent at 99 nautical miles out. So we're just going to use 1,800 feet per minute. So that should at least give you a general idea of how you come up with your uh, how you come up with your top of descent and the rate of descent based on how fast you're flying. Now, for us, because we're using this guy right here, here's our current ground speed 385. Okay, not like I said, we're going to slow that. We're, we want 350, but that's going to slow down eventually anyway. As we descend, it's going to slow down on its own. And uh, once we go below 10,000 feet, it's going to slow down substantially. So the difference should be made up. Again, this is not a precise formula. Okay, when we click the flight plan button, this gives us what's currently going on. This is the distance to the current waypoint, distance to the next waypoint, and so on. And then this is the cumulative distance. So this plus this equals this and so on and so forth so we've got 130 nautical miles until we reach San Diego this includes uh, going all the way out to Rebo and so on which you'll see during the approach brief alright so that gives us an idea of where we are from the airport and, we're, and uh, 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 when we want to start our top of descent at 99 nautical miles then we want to do it at 99 nautical miles on our cumulative okay keep in mind that if there was a straight line, let's say uh, it went from LAX straight to San Diego, okay? Well, the distance isn't actually quite that. It's gonna be, it would be a little bit higher and it would be off by a little bit. So we want to make sure we have our waypoints programmed in there. And then we'll use that to determine 
uh, when we actually start our descent. Now, that being said, uh, there is no LNAV VNAV function in here, right? So what we're going to actually have to do is we're going to change the altitude. And as soon as we change the altitude, it's going to start descending. Now, to our advantage, the default rate of descent for this aircraft, in other words, what uh, Microsoft built into it, is 1,800 feet per minute. So we're not going to need to change that. We've got the auto throttle on, so it's going to regulate our speed for us. Uh, so we're good there. So what we'll do is we'll just change the altitude and it'll start to descend. So we don't want to actually change it until we reach that top of descent point. Now, if your rate of descent needed to be higher, what you would do is you would change your altitude and maybe scroll it, you know, a couple thousand feet and then immediately go over here and change your rate of descent to meet what rate of descent you want. And of course you got the little pop up there that helps, but uh, you know, I recommend you use this guy here. So for your rate of descent, this little blue circle Okay, we would want that just before the 2 there for 1,800 feet per minute. If you were going for 2,500 feet per minute, it would be just a little past the 2. And the reason it would be just a little past the 2 is you can see it goes 1, 2, 4. This is 4,000 feet per minute, which if you're descending at that rate, you're probably going to be in trouble. All right, and then we'll also look on here to make sure that we set our altitude where we want it. So if we're going to be really strict about flying the approach, or not the approach, the arrival, then make sure that we hit all of the... All of the uh, required altitude restrictions above or below the at altitude restrictions and so on then what we would do is we would scroll to our first altitude restriction and we would start the descent now that changes the way we actually do our descent profile and this general rule that we that I just showed you won't really work for that you would have to literally do for the, to use that general rule for a very uh, precise descent, you would have to do one for each altitude restriction. So we're uh, almost over LAX, and then our next waypoint is Otis. So if our if we were if we had to be at say say we had to be at 20,000 feet at Otis, which would that be a pretty steep descent? Um, then what we would do is we would do that calculation for the distance from in altitude from LAX to Otis, or no, that's not even right either. We do it from Otis. So how far out, you know, are we from Otis before we start our descent to reach 20,000 feet at Otis, right? And then so on and so forth. Okay, I think I've blathered on long enough about that. So I think you guys probably get the point. So <clears throat> right now, oh, by the way, I did figure out how to bring up the map mode, and I'll just show you here real quick. It is, it's the format and range button here, but you can't do it in the 3D cockpit. You have to do it in the two-dimensional view like this. So, But you can change that. I knew that you could, so I was glad to find that out. I'll pop this back up because we're going to want to see that. We're actually coming up on our top of descent. We're five nautical miles from it now, four. So you can see we're at 103. When this hits 99, I'm going to start the descent. So our descent checklist, obviously we can't do our altimeter right now. Um, passenger signs are on and I think that's pretty much it <laughs> and we'll take care of we've done the arrival briefing we'll take care of the approach briefing uh, come on brain function uh, shortly after we start the descent actually be based on where we are so there's a hundred nautical miles there and as soon as it hits 99 there it is we'll start the descent here so go ahead and start our descent and we're just going to take it all the way down to 4,000 feet that was a little too far. There we go, 4,000 feet. And you can see, so it's showing 1,600 right here. But on here it shows 1,800. So you just got to give it a second to settle in there. All right. And if we look at our ground speed, we can see our ground speed's really high right now, much, much higher than we wanted it to be. We probably have a tailwind as we made that turn. So we could slow down or we can just kind of let it do its thing. We could change our rate of descent if we wanted to. We could descend a little quicker. We could change our speed. I'm going to bring the speed back a little bit to uh, 220 knots and just let it kind of do its thing. Um, let's bring in a, just a little bit of spoilers here. You'll see the nose start to come up because it always does that in default aircraft, not in the real world. All right, there we go. We don't want the uh, throttles coming up too high. So that puts us at 437, but again, as we descend, that ground speed is going to decrease naturally. So it should even out. 
which uh, means we're good to go here so let's go ahead and take care of well here in just a second I'm gonna take care of the uh, approach briefing and then I'll see you guys back on here for the approach All right, the arrival, or bleh, the approach briefing then. <laughs> we already did the arrival. So it's going to be the localizer 27 approach today. Uh, frequency on 110.9er. Remember, this is a non-precision approach, which is actually I always find interesting considering you're coming in right over the, the hills and the city there. It's a pretty, pretty tight approach, actually. But anyway, that's, uh, that's the way it's set up. So... Uh, we're actually coming in over here at MZB VOR, as I mentioned in the arrival briefing. We're going to bang left out here. Now, I've got it set to go direct to Rebu because this is default CRJ, but we're actually going to fly parallel here, probably a little past Rebu, and then swing it around here, and then come in for the approach like that. Now, let's take a look at uh, what the profile view looks like here. So at Rebu, we can be all the way down to 2,000. We'll probably, uh, when we swing around out here, we'll probably be about uh, 35, 3,600 feet, give or take a little bit. Uh, swing around, and then, of course, at Rebu, 2,000, and you're descending from there. Now, we've got uh, 2,314 meters of runway, but keep in mind, there's 552 meters of um, displaced threshold, and this has to do with uh, all the all the buildings and stuff like that that you're coming down over so we can't land on this area here we have to land beyond it three and a half degree glide slope a little bit steeper approach here uh, and pappy lights are supposed to be on the right hand side of the runway now since this is a non-precision approach this little chart here actually gives us our altitude so based on our distance from this guy IUBR, which is the localizer frequency of 110.9er, and this would be the uh, uh, come on brain function uh, Morse code identifier. Thank you. I know somebody was screaming it at me. So, based on the distance from that, when we were 11.8 nautical miles out, which would be right here, which is our descent point, uh, we should be at 4,000 feet. And then at 10 nautical miles out, which is in between here somewhere, 33, 20, 8 miles, 25, 70, uh, 6 miles, 18, 30, 5, 14, 60, and 4 miles, 1,090 feet. Now these are all MSL, which means it's important that we have the proper altimeter setting for the field. So that's how you fly the non-precision approach now what we're going to do as long as visibility allows is we're just going to be looking at the pappy lights but if not then i'm going to have to have this chart off to the side over here and keep a close eye on it so uh all the way down here to 1.3 nautical miles that's our missed approach point if we do have to fly the missed approach we fly heading 275 which is our uh, approach heading and intercept the 255 degree radial from the MZB VOR out to SARGS and climb to 2500. What does that look like? Well, over here, basically we're flying straight out on heading 275 until we intercept this 255 degree radial, which is almost at SARGS for the look of things. And then we would hold at SARGS until instructed otherwise by ATC. ATIS on 134.8, tower on 118.3, and ground on 123.9. And I believe that to be it. Any questions about the approach? Of course not. Video. Alright, so we're just passing Tori and on our way to MZB. And uh, it may seem like we're still a little high, maybe just a little bit. But as you can see, our ground speed is all the way down to 277 knots. And I only reduced our indicated speed by 10. So looking pretty good there. I think we're actually going to be all right as we slow down here a little more. I'm going to slow it down actually to 200 knots. Maybe. Let it just continue to slow on its own. I think we're going to be just fine now. As we hit MZB here, we're about 4 nautical miles from it. You can kind of see it on here. This is MZB right here. Um... As, as we cross MZB and start our left turn, I'm actually going to switch to heading mode. And I've already gone ahead and tuned in the back course, um, which is 95 degrees. I think I got it right. 275 is our approach course. 95 should be our back course. So I'm going to tune that in. Here we go. We're starting our turn. So let's hit heading mode. 
all right and this is so that I can fly parallel so you can see that I've got the heading set over here at 95 degrees and uh, if I move it at all it pops up there you go 95 degrees that's what I want this is going to give us plenty of space out here uh, as we continue on our descent flying parallel to the runway and then what I want to do is I want to switch the nav source down here uh, you can't even quite get to it it's this guy right here I want to switch this over to VOR1 and you can see IUBR is on there now and if you remember correctly from the approach briefing that is the identifier for our uh, localizer approach all right so we're gonna bypass Rebu maybe just a little bit not a whole lot but we're gonna bypass and we're gonna kinda need to anyway we're definitely still a little quick here uh, our speeds plenty slow for the altitude but let's go ahead and bring in some uh, spoilers here or speed brakes whatever you want to call them let's just get that speed to come down our ground speeds still pretty high what I don't like is the auto throttles kicking in trying to speed it back up which is a little frustrating because there's no reason for it I've got the speed set to 200 but again default aircraft what do you expect right okay good put those speed brakes back down looking good there not a problem and let's see here approach checklist the frequency is tuned into the radio uh, we could set the course to 275 that would probably be a good idea right there we go 275 uh, we are tuned in on the localizer frequency 10, feet. okay let's go ahead and get the landing lights on at this point there we go we can start bringing our flaps in hold on a sec for some reason uh, my comms decided to kick in in my headset there okay so we got one setting of flaps in uh, we're just past reboot right now I'm actually gonna go out over this mountain and then just swing it all the way around should be easy enough and it should intercept that localizer on its own now remember uh, what we're going to use here is this guy. So this is giving us our distances right here. We're at 8.4 from IUBR. Okay, when we're at 11.8, .8, we want to be at 4,000 nautical, uh, not 4,000 nautical. When we're, when we're at 11.8 nautical miles, we want to be at 4,000 feet. All right, so you can see we're going to come up on that pretty quick, and we're still definitely high, uh, but I think we're going to be all right here. Go ahead and slow it down some more. Let's bring it down to 180 knots. And let's bring in that next flap setting. No, no, not flaps 20, flaps 8. There we go. Boy, it jumped right to that, didn't it? That'll help slow us down a little bit, which is good. Okay, there's 10.7 again. 11.8 is where we want to be at 4,000 feet. So we're going to bypass that just a little bit and then swing it around. And then uh, we can hit the approach switch and it'll line, its, it'll line us up nicely, okay? Uh, I think that makes sense. Okay. <laughs> I, my mind's going all over the place. There's 11.8 right there because I'm trying to keep up with everything we got going on here. And uh, 7,000 feet. So we'll just go a little bit further and then uh, let's go ahead and start swinging around now. So I now here's the catch. If you swing it too far, if you swing it beyond 180 degrees, it'll try and turn the other way. We don't want that, obviously. All right. There's our rate of descent picking up just a little bit. It'll do that sometimes in the turn. Keep an eye on it there keep an eye on this line here because if it gets too too uh, too close to that line then guess what it's gonna um, man my brain isn't functioning then it's gonna start to roll out of the turn and we don't want it to roll out of the turn until we're much closer we want it to roll out around 255 ish give or take because I think we're gonna be just a little bit right of our center line there yeah, we should be just a little right of center line. So that's going to offset us by about by about uh, 20 degrees. And see, now look, there's our descent coming in nicely there. Uh, we're at 13.5 right now. We can go ahead and bring that speed down a little more. Let's bring it down to 160. And then let's hit that approach, but, uh, approach switch. And we can keep an eye on it right here as this swings in it should turn right on and it's actually turning back to the left a little to intercept that localizer so 11.8 we're supposed to be at 4,000 feet let's go ahead and let's bring our altitude down more let's take it all the way down to just below a thousand feet 
and then we'll watch our rate of descent here so we're coming up on 4000 we're actually just a little outside our 11.8 oops wrong way okay we want to be at 3320 at 10 nautical miles which uh, we're gonna hit that no problem actually I actually reduced our rate of descent just a little bit because we're descending just a little fast Okay, there's 10 nautical miles. Our next one is 2570 at 8 nautical miles. And we'll have no problem hitting that either. Reduce that rate of descent just a little bit more. 500. Thank you. Boy, that's loud, isn't it? Let's bring our speed all the way down to, let's see how much fuel we got there. We're looking pretty good. Let's bring it down to 140 knots. Bring in that next setting of flaps. And go ahead and lower the landing gear. Okay, there's 2,500 right there, and we're at 8.3, so we're still descending just a little quick. Bring it to about 700 feet per minute rate of descent. Maybe. What's it doing here? Where'd my autopilot go? Altitude hold. You son of a biscuit weaver. Okay, well, we've got a visual. <laughs> the altitude hold kicked off. Did you see that? Come on. Can't get a break around here. Okay, there's the track IR coming on. We got plenty of clear skies now. Let's go ahead and uh, bring in that next flap setting. And one more go to full flaps. And we can bring that speed down just a little bit more. Bring it down to 130. Let the autopilot keep doing its thing for the moment. We're actually uh, just a skosh low. Happy lights are on the wrong side of the runway. There we go. Autopilot off and speed hold off. You have to turn the speed hold off on this thing. Whoop. Woo, there she goes. <laughs> All right, we need to slow her down a little bit more. Looking pretty good. 1000. It's kind of hard to tell if we're a little higher or a little low at this point, isn't it? Pappy lights aren't showing up real well. I think we're just a skosh low. Please stop saying 1,000. Boy, those are really loud call-outs that I have in there. I forgot to change them, that's why. I put in the default ones. They're a little high. They're a little loud. Okay, that should be glide slope right there. Looking pretty good. 600, 700 feet per minute. Yeah, we're just a skosh low there. Just a tiny bit. And the trim on this thing is really fickle. He keeps trying to climb, and I touch the trim button once. Okay, yeah, just a tiny bit low. Looking good overall. We're actually a little more than 500 feet over the runway. It's because of all the terrain below us. I don't see any floating houses this time. Last time I flew in here, we had... Oh, there's a floating house right there. One, two floating houses. That's really obnoxious that that happens. I don't know what causes it. I've talked to my buddy. 300. You know those throttles back a little more there's another floating house right in front of us that's just ridiculous isn't it okay looking good just a tiny bit low there but speed doesn't want to come back does it all right 200 looking good plenty of runway put her down nice and smooth shall we 100 50, 40, 40, 30, 30, 20, 20, 10. Uh, that wasn't too bad.
All right, so as usual, I forgot the uh, landing checklist. Not that we have an actual checklist with us, but let's go ahead and take care of the after landing checklist. Let's get taxi lights on, landing lights off, flaps coming up, spoilers should be all the way down, and APU on. Where are you at, APU? APU on, and strobe lights off. There we go. Let's go ahead and uh, let's go down to the next gate here. So our flight time, uh, total time right now is at 2 hours and 21 minutes. So we definitely, uh, we're just a little behind schedule, but uh, that's all right. We wanted to make sure that we went over the required number of hours, and we did, so that's fantastic. We burned a lot more than 8,000 pounds of fuel, I can tell you that. Actually, no, we burned almost exactly 8,000 pounds. Well, I'll take a look. It says it, the fuel calculations on A cars are way off, in case anybody's wondering. Uh, don't use those to actually determine how much fuel you used. You need to look at what it says in your aircraft right here. So, let's pull her on in here. See if I can stop semi-close to the actual uh, stop block point there. Oh, let's see. I don't even think this one's meant for this aircraft. <laughs> and let's try that right there go ahead and put the parking brake on turn the track IR off and looking good okay let's go ahead and take care of our shutdown checklist the APU is up and running so we can go ahead and just kill the fuel on both of these excuse me that's fantastic let's hop up on the overhead here and passenger signs can come off which are actually right here there we go. Uh, let's see, nav stays on, beacon stays on, logo can go off at this point. Uh, both of these can go to the stop position. Looking good, and we can roll right into a power down checklist. We'll pretend passengers are offloading because these gates never move for me. So, power down, turn the APU off. Give it a second to shut itself off here. We can turn Gen 1 and 2 off since the engines are off. We can turn the APU generator off and the battery master off. Fuel pumps come off. Shouldn't be able to actually see anything since, you know, there's no power on the aircraft. There shouldn't be any lights. But everything else is shut down as it should be. And there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. That completes our last flight as a first officer. Can you imagine? Let's go ahead and take care of ACARS really quick. There she is. As you can see, we're scheduled for two hours and six minutes. We are at two hours and 24 minutes right now. So we're good to go. Let's go ahead and end the flight. File the PIREP. And we are done, sir, done. Fantastic. I enjoyed this flight very much, folks. As always, it's been a great time. It's been a fun ride up to this point, hasn't it? Boy, I'll tell you what, uh, first officers, it's a tough grind, though. You know, limited on uh, decent pay wear commuter aircraft really kind of kicks you in the butt. If they'd have released that CRJ from Aerosoft, I think we'd have had a lot more fun with it. But I still had fun, don't get me wrong. I just think it would have been a little more uh, in-depth maybe would be the right term. But we did make really good use of the fuel there uh, E-Jets. So really happy for that. And uh, some of you really liked those, so it gave you an opportunity to get get a good look at how those how those work and how to operate them uh, effectively and efficiently or at least I hope it did so been a great time uh, we're up to 2200 subscribers at this point fantastic I love it thank you all so much I'm gonna be releasing this video here in the next day or so I'm gonna release it quickly um, this weekend this coming weekend uh, October 16th at 1000 Pacific Standard Time I will be conducting a special live stream uh, it will be a fundraiser for National Virtual Cargo. They've, they're a fantastic virtual airline, uh, and all of the finances are handled by one person. And, uh, you know, I just want to help him out. That airline's given a lot to me, and I want to give something back. And so I hope you guys will join me for that live stream on Twitch, Captain Mac 3588 uh, It'll be 1000 Pacific Standard Time, October 16th. Uh, show up if you can donate or even if you can't donate what just got so loud that's ridiculous it's okay if you if you if you can't donate you're unable to that's all right don't worry about it show up anyway it's going to be a great time and hold on a second because that's just ridiculous that i have to yell really 
Really there? See, now, why couldn't I find that livery? Why couldn't I find that? I was looking and looking and looking and I couldn't find one of those. That's obviously an AI livery, but let's wait till he gets out of the way. I love how the nose wheel steering doesn't even turn. Oh jeez, it's going to take forever. Let's hop back in here so we don't have to listen to him. I'm sorry about that. But anyway, listen, really special live stream. I want to help National Virtual out. And I hope that you guys do too. And once again, if you're unable to donate, that's okay. Please show up anyway. Show your support for virtual airlines in general because often is the case these are run by you know one or two individuals and they front all the money for it and so I just want to be able to give a little something back we may do something like that for PVA in the not too distant future either so um, I think that pretty much wraps it up as always folks if you haven't taken the opportunity already already go ahead and smash that subscribe button again we're up to 2200 subscribers I appreciate every single one of you I do try to interact in the comments section so I hope that you guys have seen that don't forget to like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter. Most often, or typically, the uh, live stream announcements are going to take place on Facebook. Uh, and then, of course, hop on over to Twitch, Captain Mac 3588 and uh, click the follow button over there as well. So let's hop on over to the website and let's see the fruits of our labor. All right, and there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Captain Mac is now officially a captain and i'm so excited about this this is fantastic let's take a quick look at the pi rep here uh let's see what we got going on so it was two hours six minutes scheduled we flew it in 224 so that's still on time auto approved everything's good to go on that and that's fantastic but let's be let's be realistic we don't give two turds about this at this point let's jump over here uh, let's just see what's available to us now because Oh, it's going to open up a whole world for us. I'm not even going to pick an aircraft here. Let's just go to uh, Captain now, not First Officer. And bam, there we have it. There's there's 25 pages at 20 per page. Uh, let's see. So there's like 500 flights for a Captain out of here. And we've got all the First Officer and PFO flights available if we want to in the future. Lots of 737s. We're going to make great use of that PMDG aircraft. I'm so excited about that. As well as, remember now, I just picked up the uh, uh, FS Labs A320, or it was donated to me once again by my good friend Shaker MT. Thank you so much for that. Um, so we can we can fly the 320, and I've also got Aerosoft A318, 1920, N21. So fantastic. Tons of stuff we can fly out of here. But before we pick, here's what I want to do. If you go down here to activities and then go to available missions and forget about the FO crap. We're done with that. Okay. We're moving on to captain here. Now there's tons of missions for captain, but there's one in particular that I've been really looking forward to um, because I've flown it before, obviously, in my other profile, and it was a lot of fun. It's an Alaska mission for a captain. Where is it at? Where is it at? Come on, we gotta find it here. It's not that one. Pan American Highway. Uh, la, 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 la. We gotta find it here. Uh, come on. I probably I probably already passed it, knowing me. Um, 737 Classic Tour of Canada. No, but that's something we could certainly do later on. That sounds like a lot of fun. Uh, I think I already passed it. It's gotta be up here somewhere. It is. Look at all of these. Oh, look, and so, one of you was saying something about doing some flying over in Europe. Well, guess what? They've got all these lap of America, but they've also got, look, lap of Europe, lap of Europe, and the Boeing and the Airbus. So those are some missions we can do. We can make our way over there and do some a lot of European flights, and I'm actually really looking forward to that. That'll be a lot of fun. We haven't done anything over there yet. We've been literally stuck in the United States, with except for a couple quick trips up into Canada. So we'll definitely get into that. Um, oh, come on. Where is it at? Here we go. World Tour 26. Seven, uh, tour, oh, no. That's Tour of Canada. Where's my... There's a Tour of Alaska on here. Come on. Now I'm starting to feel like a doofus here. Classic Tour of Canada. The most extreme airports. Air Al Alaska Air Mission. World... This has got to be it. Let's take a look. These should almost. These are all 737s, I think. Um, 
Here's all the flights. Yes. So they're all 734s. I've got a 736 uh, with the PMDG, and then we've got one in a 738. And you can see it hops all over Alaska. Um, I think there's at least one flight into Juno. Yep, Juno over there. Um, in fact, we can look right here. So arrival, there's one into Juno, two into Juno. And I love flying into Juno. That's a lot of fun. And there's some really neat approaches on some of these flights, I'm going to tell you. Um, and it starts in Seattle. Okay, so that's the key right there. It starts in Seattle. So let's hop back over here. Oops, wrong one. We want to go to search and book flights. Okay, so I'm going to introduce you to a new feature here. I think I've shown you this before. It's not a new feature. Um, so auto routing and departing and arriving airports. So what I want to do is I want to go from San Diego up to Seattle, right? So, and I'm sure there's a flight directly there for a captain. Find flights. There's got to be one that goes from San Diego to Seattle. It'll probably take like 10 minutes to load because my internet's decided to be slow. Okay, here we go. So what you're going to see here, so there's obviously flights that are all direct. Okay, now if there was, if it wasn't direct, if there was two or three flights, then then it would show, you know, this would be leg one, and then you'd see leg two, and so on. So, all right, standby. Here's here's what we're going to do. Now, I have a feeling I know where this is going to go because I know how much you guys love that PMDG aircraft. But here's option number one. Okay, uh, let's go. Let's stick with, ooh, let's do Alaska since that's who we're going to fly. So Alaska Airlines Flight 495, uh, San Diego. So I'm going to write it down so I don't forget. I put it as a voting thread down there. Up to Seattle in the PMDG 737. Now, if we do that flight, if you choose number one, okay, I got to write number one next to this, then that means you also want to do that Alaska mission, which means once we get to Seattle, there won't be any voting. All the flights will be that Alaska mission until it's done, which will be a lot of PMDG 737. So that's option number one. Okay, we're not going to book anything right now. Uh, where's my... Okay, we got to go... Back. Let's just hit the back button. <laughs> okay, so now let's look for option number two here. Departing San Diego. And you know what? I'm, I'm going to change it up here. Here's what I'm going to do. So option number two... I got to write it down or I'll forget. Option number two is been there oh tough choices huh let's uh let's put this to 100 per page been there been there a hundred times a lot of 737s flying out of san diego huh oh man what do we choose here there's there's some flights that are catching my eye but they're really long flights go to the next page oh i already did go to the next page it just goes directly to the bottom for some reason. Uh, I'm not ready to hop back in the Mad Dog yet, but we will be doing that. Um, I'm looking for a flight in a 320 in case anybody's wondering. We could see that's all the way across the country. Boston might be kind of fun. Uh, what is CLT? Charlotte. Charlotte might be a fun one. It's a long flight, but it might be worth it. Oh, that's a tough choice. You know what? We haven't. F I don't think we've flown into Charlotte. That's going to be option number two. Option number two is San Diego to Charlotte or KCLT in the FS Labs A320. Now it's listed as a 321 on here. Let's just double check. I'm pretty sure it used to be if it was a if it was listed as a 320, that's what you had to fly it in. Um, you couldn't substitute those, but I think they changed that. Yeah, see, so they got rid of the 318, 319. So 18, 19, 20, and 21 are all together on the substitution chart now, which means we can fly the FS Labs A320 for that. So that are that's your choices right there, folks. Uh, once again, option number one is San Diego up to Seattle in the PMDG 737. Keeping in mind, if you guys vote for that flight, that means you are also voting to pick up and start the Alaska Air Mission 737 mission uh, from Seattle, which is uh, was like 20 flights or something. We would we would do all of those flights 
before anybody gets another vote. Or option number two is San Diego to Charlotte in the FS Labs A320. Uh, and if we do choose that flight, uh, we'll be over on the East Coast. We might look at a hop across the pond. So I know a lot of you love that 737, but I know there's a lot of you who are hoping to hop across the pond as well. So something to keep in mind. All right, that's going to wrap it up for this one. That's going to wrap it up for this season. We are raring to go. Uh, don't forget, this Sunday, October 16th at 1000 Pacific Standard Time, we are going to be doing a fundraiser live stream. Please show up. Even if you cannot donate anything, show up anyway. It's going to be fantastic. And then it's going to be... Uh, cold and dark for like the next four weeks you're not going to see or hear anything out of me um, if I get an opportunity I'll respond to comments but don't be uh, too hurt when you don't see any videos you're gonna have a lot of time to vote on that uh, on what flight we do next so that's gonna work really well and then when I get done hunting because that's what I'm doing I'm going hunting then we're gonna kick off our inaugural flight as a captain for Phoenix Virtual Airways. So, until next time, ladies and gentlemen, as always, keep the blue side up unless otherwise instructed by ATC. God bless you all, and have a fantastic day.